I've been going out with Nick Nelson since I was 14. He likes rugby and Formula One, animals, especially dogs, the Marvel Universe, the sound felt tips make on paper, rain, drawing on shoes, Disneyland, and minimalism. He also likes me. In 2019, during year 9 of high school and before the COVID pandemic turned everyone's life upside down, I used to visit the library frequently during class time. While I was perusing through the library for a new book, I came across Heartstopper, a romantic young adult novel about two high school boys. After reading and finishing it under 30 minutes, I became obsessed. Once I read it, I just couldn't stop. I was 14 when my obsession with the book Heartstopper began. I'm 17 now and I'm not as obsessed, but I still read the book from time to time and it never fails to make me smile. So imagine my surprise when I found out a week ago that Netflix had made a show about the novel. I binge watched the show almost instantly and I absolutely loved it. I never thought that I would see the day where a show on Netflix would be centered around a healthy gay teen romance that didn't include queer pain, stereotypes or major censorship. Not to mention, it's an adaption of a story that I already like and have read. I cannot praise Heartstopper enough for being such a good show. But despite how amazing Heartstopper is, I had a very big problem with the show. A problem that I didn't realize I had until I was a few episodes in. Don't get me wrong, Heartstopper is great, but I just can't bear to watch it all at once. It was just too much. But then I would ask myself why. It's not very graphic, nor is it as triggering as other teen shows that are out there, but yet it physically hurt to watch at times and often left a feeling of melancholy inside me. I kept asking myself, if Heartstopper is so good, then why does it hurt to watch? Why is it so painful? It's been three days since I finished watching Heartstopper, and that doesn't include the amount of times that I've rewatched it. Since I have finished it recently, my emotions may be all over the place for this video if I'm being honest. I may stumble over my words or not properly get my point across. Articulation may be hard in this video, but at the same time, I wanted to get this out while my feelings were still fresh. Also, if you notice any weird cuts in the audio, or if you can hear that my voice sounds different, it's because I did cry in between recordings, and I had to stop recording multiple times. I know, crying, how gross. But anyways, as I was saying, I finished watching Heartstopper and I loved it. For those who don't know what Heartstopper is, it's a show on Netflix that is an adaptation of the story Heartstopper by Alice Oseman with the same name and same plot. The story follows Charlie Spring, a shy but very charming boy who is openly gay. Nick Nelson is the other main character of the story. He is a boy at Charlie's school who's popular and cool, but very sweet. The story explores the gradual relationship between Nick and Charlie. Charlie develops a crush on Nick, who he assumes to be straight since he's popular, in the rugby team, and friends with some pretty homophobic people at the start of the story. Charlie isn't very popular and is more reserved. He was also bullied when he first came out. While Charlie deals with his feelings for Nick, Nick is trying to understand his own feelings towards Charlie since he's never felt this way towards another boy. There are many obstacles in their way, like Nick's homophobic friends, as well as the school's judgement towards them. There is also Charlie's very controlling ex-boyfriend who can't take no for an answer. And let's not forget teenage anxiety and the inability that teenagers have to just ask each other out. I'm not going to say any more, you go and watch the show for yourself. I highly recommend it. The highlights of the show for me were how Netflix were able to adapt its source material. Netflix doesn't have the best history with adaptations, so I was scared because I didn't want it to tarnish Heartstopper's reputation. Going in I had low expectations, but I was surprised at how well they adapted the show. The cast, in my opinion, are amazing, and I would say they match the characters very well. Not to mention they pass as believable teenagers. The soundtrack fits perfectly, and the acting was good compared to some of the other teen-related stuff I've seen on Netflix. All in all, they did a great job. The second thing I liked was the queer relationships and representation. Two particular ones that come to mind are Elle and Nick, and this isn't because their stories are better written than the others, or more interesting, they just stand out to me. Elle is a normal teenage girl. She goes to an all-girls private school, she has crushes, and she has teenage problems. But you know what I like about Elle the most? It's the fact that she's just that a normal teenage girl. She knows and loves herself. She is confident and something that other trans girls can look up to. She's not just another character that falls victim to the trope of a trans character that is either brutalized, hypersexualized, or subjected to some sort of trauma. Obviously, not every trans person's story is going to be as happy as Elle's, and there are some trans people out there who have suffered and gone through tribulations 
who need their stories to be told. These stories are just as valid as L's. But it becomes exhausting when the only stories being told about trans people are centered around their pain. L is something positive and wholesome that we needed to see. Whilst on the topic of sexuality and identity, I like how the show handles bisexuality. Bisexuality is honestly bungled sometimes in shows. It's depicted weirdly in some shows or treated as an extension of promiscuity. Seriously, look at how bisexuals are treated in real life and in media. Bi people are either an object of desire for straight people where they can act out their weird fantasies or subjected to biphobia in their own community. So to see Heartstopper handle it like it was something normal and not a mythical unicorn was nice. As I said before, Nick being bisexual really stood out, especially the scene where he googles am I gay and begins to research his sexuality. His journey to understand himself isn't clear cut and it takes a while for him to get there. And while he does this, he is very vulnerable, which mirrors a lot of queer kids in real life who struggle with their own sexuality. The third and most memorable thing I liked about Heartstopper is just how darn cute it is. Like come on, just look at it. Everybody is just so adorable. When I think of youth, I think of this. Kids messing about, playing rugby, and being awkward around their crushes, but more importantly, being cringe. Granted, there are some darker parts of the show, but it still remains lighthearted. With the rise of teen shows that focus more on the darker parts of adolescence, I think it's important to see a teenage show that highlights the fluffier and more positive side of teenhood. In my recent Euphoria video, I received a lot of critique for saying that teenagers having sex and doing drugs isn't realistic. Many people pointed out that it was indeed realistic and they knew many teenagers who were engaging in sex and taking drugs. I'm not going to dispute that. There are teenagers who have done these things, hence why it is realistic in a sense, but that doesn't make it the universal experience of teenhood. I'm not shaming teenagers who may partake in sex or do drugs, I'm just saying that there are some of us who have not experienced such things and are more likely to consider it unrealistic because of our lack of experience. There are some who gravitate towards shows like Heartstopper because they can relate to that aspect of teenhood. I believe the show encapsulates the innocence of being a teenager and explores their plight in a more light-hearted way. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's time to get emotional. Oh boy, I can feel the tears already coming. I mentioned earlier that it hurt to watch Heartstopper. Like, it physically hurt. I had to pause it on multiple occasions, and the funny thing is, it was never scenes that were uncomfortable or sad. I did cry and feel upset during sad moments, but nothing hurt more than when Nick and Charlie or other major characters shared moments of happiness. The finale had me especially sobbing. I couldn't contain my tears after hearing Nick openly confess his love for Charlie. But these weren't tears of joy, these were tears of pain. I'm obviously happy for them, but after that I really had to evaluate why I was so upset. I came to two conclusions to why this may be. However, they might change seeing that these thoughts and feelings are fresh and I still need time to digest. It's hard to watch Heartstopper because for one, it invokes a feeling of jealousy and pain because we don't live in a queer friendly world, and two, it reminds me of the lack of romance I had when I was younger. Seeing not only two, but a group of queer students have a support system and love themselves hurts so much. It reminds me of what many queer people miss in their lives. There are so many queer kids that don't have what Nick, Elle or Charlie had. This not only applies to their personal life, but the very media we consume. It's all around us. For years, the queer representation we've seen is centered around pain or stereotypes. It's always the same story about star-crossed gay lovers or trans people who are just walking jokes. And don't get me started on how asexual people are just disregarded in media. But Heartstopper is none of these things. It's just a romance about two boys, who though do face hardships, showcases the healthy part of gay romance and portrays it as just another relationship. It's good representation. But good representation hurts because in the minds of many, it's unattainable. It's painful to see the blossoming romance of two gay characters on screen when the world around you isn't like that. Escapism through shows is a great way to experience something that isn't accessible in the real world, but it's also a reminder of its absence. It's really a double-edged sword for me. I get so sad when I see Nick and Charlie's relationship because it reminds me what I could never have, really what I could never achieve. But all of these problems are to do with me and have nothing to do with the show. I can watch Heartstopper now because I've kind of worked through these feelings. I'm glad Heartstopper exists for queer kids today. It's a great step forward and will help many realize that they are seen and they too can look at a piece of media that not only represents them, but tells them that there are people out there who care about them.